I want to introduce you to what has become my most renowned work of art, Soul Kite. Soul Kite was born after I responded to a call for art in Annapolis, Maryland. The theme of the art was Shape of Change, and they were looking for self-portraiture. I thought about painting, I thought about photography, I thought about all of the different ways one could create a self-portrait, but I decided to sculpt a transformational kite out of a uniform that was very deep and personal to me. And I thought it very, very much showed the changes I was going through with moral injury, post-traumatic stress disorder, and, uh, and as I was moving forward through mental health, trying to redefine myself um, as what I saw as something dark and ugly, um, something that crawls on the ground like a caterpillar. And I wanted to transform myself into that butterfly and, and fly. So Soul Kite was born out of that. Essentially, I researched um, the Afghan kites, uh, the kites that were flown in um, kite competitions and kite fighting and things in Kabul for years before the invasion of the Taliban and the fall of really Afghan society at that point in history. Um, I couldn't get the same materials native to Afghanistan, but I ordered... Um, wood dowels from um, from Pakistan and I soaked the wood dowels in in a bathtub for about three days and then once they were um, soaked through and malleable I notched the dowels so that wire wouldn't slip and then I used um, stainless steel wire to uh, to bind the pre-soaked dowels together and form the kite um, I chose the shape of a butterfly so once the kite was framed, um, then it came to uh, destroying a uniform that was very personal to me. It's the, the exact uniform I was wearing um, on April 4th, uh, 2011, when uh, some very, very brave men and friends of mine and I got overwhelmed by the Taliban. And um, essentially it was a situation where 12 of us were fighting off 120 plus Taliban um, think lone survivor type situation. It was very brutal. Um, but during that fight, uh, we were hit with multiple heavy machine gun fire, multiple rocket pro propelled grenades, mortars, everything you can think of, um, recoilless rifles, PKMs. But, um, when I think the fifth RPG breached our position, it, um, it whizzed over my shoulder and hit in the ground behind me. And when it did, a group of us were, were fragged with uh, shrapnel and, and, um, and injured, you know, by that RPG, knocked unconscious, came to, obviously had to continue to fight and whatnot. But this uniform I had um, was soaked in gunpowder. It was blood soaked um, and it had uh, still metal shards from shrapnel. So what I did is <clears throat> I took that gunpowder and blood soaked uniform and with scissors, uh, I cut off um, like my combat action badge and any of the badges and Velcro and um, non-fabric type devices that I would then use as inclusions later. But anyway, so then I was using the scissors and I was cutting it apart. Um, and it was a very, very profound, cathartic <clears throat> process for me. I... Um, I really went through a whirlwind of emotions as I cut apart this uniform. So I put down the scissors and I started ripping it by hand. And uh, I found myself late at night in, in a studio in George Mason University, ripping apart this uniform by hand and just bawling my eyes out. Um, one, I, I, I was very humbled and honored to serve my country and serve the American and, and our allies, uh, the NATO people. You know, I was honored to be a part of that. Um, so there was joy. There was love for brothers and sisters I served with. There was sorrow for lives lost and lives taken. There was sorrow for all the things I couldn't do. There was anger towards my government and other governments for... Um, I, I felt betrayal for, for making promises to, let's say, the people of Afghanistan uh, once they dethroned the Taliban to help them stabilize their, 
their society, but then turning their back on them when they need them most. So I had this, all these emotions, anger, actually rage, um, love, compassion, hurt, fear, everything wrapped in me. And it all came out as I took my, my hands and just ripped apart this uniform. So that was a big part of it. But once I cut the uniform up or ripped the uniform up, I soaked it in into a bucket for, uh, for several days to kind of break down the fiber. So after all that's done, I fill the Hollander beater up with the right portion of water um, and I put it on its 40 setting, which is a kind of a slow pulping setting. And I started adding the uniform fabric and, um, and, and the cotton linters and the Hollander beating was doing, beater was doing his job and beating down the uniform. It was a very slow process. Um, after that, I took the pulp out, drained the and cleaned the Hollander beater, and um, and I put the uniform pulp in like a five gallon bucket. And then uh, and then I went and used a Declan mold, and I started pulling sheets of paper from the uniform pulp. Um, and so once they were all pulled, I, I put them on blotter paper and um, put them in a hydraulic press to squeeze out some of the water. So I let them dry slightly, and then I just began form wrapping the wet paper around the dowels, around the kite. But then I would add wetter paper to the top and then stick the inclusions that I mentioned earlier, like the combat action badge. So I started placing these into the wet paper as I was molding the kite. And, uh, and this whole process took me a couple of weeks um, and it was, it was very therapeutic and it was, um, I put as much pain and suffering and sweat and blood and tears and laughter and happiness and smiles and other emotions. I molded all that into this kite. So this kite was really became a personification of, of tragedy and of triumph and of transformation. And that's how Soul Kite was born. Thank you for listening.